Welcome to another video from ExplainingComputers.com. This time I'm going to return to one of my favourite subjects, which is data storage. And I'm doing this because I've just purchased this, a Western Digital Elements 5TB external hard drive. And so in this video we're going to be opening this up, testing it out, things like that. But I'm also going to talk more broadly about data wrangling, about data backup, and how this is going to fit in a slightly revised off-site data backup strategy for my own data. So, let's go and get started. So, here we have our Western Digital Elements 5TB external hard drive, which I managed to purchase for £99.99. And in the United States, these sell for about $100. For reasons I'll come on to, I specifically wanted a two and a half inch hard drive with as high a capacity as possible. And as I always stick with Western Digital hard drives, this seemed to be the best bet. And do please note, this video is not sponsored by Western Digital. I have no association with Western Digital other than always using their hard drives. Anyway, to put this drive in context, let's visit it on the web. Here it is, where we can note there's also another version of the WD Elements drives called the WD Elements SE. And as far as I'm aware, these are absolutely identical internally. They've got a very slightly different case as we can see if we flick between them. They come with very slightly different backup and utility software that I wouldn't use anyway. So it makes no difference to me whether I buy an SE or the original version. And in fact, there's also a gaming version, which I think is now in clearance, which I'm sure is again identical internally. Western Digital also sell a two and a half inch hard drive called the My Passport. And this is slightly different because this has got 256 bit AES hardware encryption. And that sounds fantastic, doesn't it? Except that you have to use software to set the password and then to access the drive. And this software is not available for Linux. So personally, as I want access in Windows and Linux, I'm going to continue to use the free Veracrypt software for encryption, and hence I bought an Elements drive and not a My Passport. Oh, and to be completely complete, let's just note there is also a My Passport Ultra. What's the difference here? Well, the difference is the My Passport Ultra has a Type C rather than a micro super speed USB connector, if you happen to care about that. Anyway, Let's now open this up. We'll bring in a Stanley the knife and just cut through the label like that. Simple unboxing even for me. And here we are. Come on, out you come. There we are. Here's our new drive. How do we get it out? Here we've got a cable, the uh, super speed connector I was just mentioning. Lots of stuff, but here's the drive itself. Looks a nice little thing, doesn't it? Yes, there we are. This is the Western Digital Elements drive. Five terabytes for a hundred pounds or a hundred dollars in this form factor. I find that extraordinary if you think back uh, only a few years. But uh, anyway, there we are. This is the drive. So I think now we should test its performance. Right, I've now got the drive connected up and running. It's got a very small blue indicator LED down here to show it's powered up. But other than that, there's nothing to report. So let's go across to the Windows desktop and we'll go up to this PC, right click and go to manage, check out our new drive. And if we go down to disk management down there. I'm guessing it's already set up. It is already set up. Nothing's come up asking us to set up the drive. It's not like when you buy a new internal drive. Here, the whole thing has been set up already. There we can see it. Look, it's been formatted with a single NTFS partition. I'm perfectly happy with that. And if we open up uh, this PC, we can see it there. Look, F has been mapped as the elements drive and it comes with this software. And what I'm going to do is to delete this software because I don't want it. There we are, it can go away. And I remember in the past, I used to be very nervous about doing that. You buy a new external drive, it would have some software on. Oh, I must have a look at this. It's very important it came with a drive. If you don't want it, and you might want it, of course, but if you don't want it, just get rid of it. So there we are. We've got a nice empty drive. And I think we should just test it out a bit. So let's run up Crystal Dismark, which I've got down there. And Windows doesn't even like this these days. Never mind. 
And uh, if we now select our new drive, there's drive F, let us run all the tests. And there we are, it has finished. And in the days of NVMe SSDs, these are hardly impressive results, but they're not bad. Well over 100 megabytes a second, read and write to this external two and a half inch hard drive. However, these are theoretical tests and I always like to do real tests as well. So let's just bring up the drive like that. There we are. And down here, I've got a folder somewhere. Where is it? It's going to be uh, that one, which has got in it an explaining computers video that is being made. If we open it up, you can see my standard directory structure for an explaining computers video, audio, video files, ProRes, etc. And I think here we've got just over two gigabytes. Let's just have a look. Let's look at properties. This is yeah, 2.28 gigabytes of file, so this is a relatively small backup for me, in fact, a very small backup for me, but it's a reasonable quantity of data to use in the test, and it is entirely representative of the type of data I'll be copying to this drive. So let's just do a test. Let's just do a paste like this. And as usual, we'll speed on through. And there we are. It's copied our 2.28 gigabytes of data in 22.1 seconds. Or in other words, this drive will be able to back up about six gigabytes of data per minute. I'm very happy with that. So let's now move on to why I purchased this drive. So why have I purchased this? Well, my plan, my cunning plan, is to start using drives like this in place of these. And uh, what we have here is a StarTech Caddy, an InfoSafe Caddy, and this slots into a bay on the front of my video editing PC. Although you can also connect these directly using SATA or USB on the back. And for about 15 years, I've been using these as part of my backup process with drives stored in rotation in impact resistant waterproof pellet cases like this. And I've also got another one like this. It happens to be yellow. The two cases never meet now because one is always kept off site. But if we open up the one I've got access to right now, they're slightly tricky to get into. They're not arthritic friendly catches, I can tell you that. But inside, as you can see, we have foam. So you can take a caddy like I had just showed you and slot it in like that. And I've now got many of these caddies in use. I've got them in here, I've got them in the other Pelly case, I've got various other ones in use. I like these. And over the years, I've upgraded the drives I've used in them increasingly. When I first put drives in these, the first two caddies were fitted with these 320 gigabyte Western Digital Scorpio Black two and a half inch drives. But in time, I needed more capacity, and Western Digital made higher capacity drives. So I moved to 750 gigabyte, one terabyte, and most recently, I've got two terabyte drives in, in the caddies here. But now I'm looking to upgrade my two terabyte units to something bigger. And the only drive I could find that was bigger and actually still being sold was this one from Seagate, which is a four terabyte, two and a half inch drive, although they also do a five terabyte if you can get hold of them. And if you're wondering, Western Digital right now only list one terabyte drives in their black two and a half inch drive range and two terabyte drives in their blue two and a half inch drive range. And they did make a four terabyte version of this drive. And I found it on the AliExpress saying it's no longer available, but it did exist at one point in time. You could get a four terabyte Western Digital Blue two and a half inch drive, but no more. And I do find this somewhat strange given that as we saw earlier, Western Digital do make four terabyte and five terabyte versions of lots of different external two and a half inch drives. So they clearly do make high capacity two and a half inch mechanisms. You just can't buy them in a standalone internal drive. And I guess this just reflects demand in the marketplace. Not many people want these drives anymore. Anyway, it hopefully explains why after 15 years, I'm stopping using these caddies or phasing them out of my backup processes and using something like this instead, which is uh, much cheaper than anything I could get to go in here, the four terabyte Barracuda and it's got higher capacity. And in theory, this will slot into my case. You're thinking, Chris, you basically got these because they'll fit into your cases. I have, am I bonkers? I possibly am. Now, in case you're wondering, I use these cases and the two and a half inch drives inside them to maintain 
off-site backups as part of a broader 441 backup strategy. This means that I keep four copies of all data on four separate media with at least one copy always held off-site. So I'm running an enhanced version of the standard 321 backup rule, which states that you should always keep at least three copies of your data on two separate media with one off-site. And if you want more information on this, check out my cybersecurity backups and encryption video. To explain how my two and a half inch off-site backup drives fit into the wider picture, I manage my data by dividing it into three categories. Firstly, I have what I call normal data. This is small scale data, only a few tens of gigabytes in size. This is documents, spreadsheets, images, photographs, things like that. And these are backed up on local SSDs and hard drives and also online. And indeed, a lot of this data is created online in Google Docs, although I also back up to Microsoft and Amazon Web Services accounts. And I also keep really critical data, financial records, things like that, on encrypted USB drives that I keep on my person when I leave home. Secondly, I have live or recent video projects. This is a medium scale category of data, totaling hundreds of gigabytes, and here I back up to local SSDs and hard drives, and also to on-person encrypted drives. So whenever I leave home, I'm carrying with me several hundred gigabytes of encrypted data that stores all the projects I'm working on at that moment in time. So that gives me off-site backup, at least when I'm not at home. And then finally, every four to six weeks, those drives get full, and I move things to my proper archive, my longer-term backup system, and this Archive Video Projects Backup is large-scale data, loads and loads of terabytes, and it is backed up to local hard drives. I use a couple of five terabyte Lacey Quadras. I use a 10 terabyte Western Digital Black Drive, as I talked about in a video on my channel when I upgraded to it just over a year ago. And I even have some bare three and a half inch drives for when I archive files off my video editing PC just to keep yet another copy. And then on top of all this, I achieve off-site backup for my archive video projects using the two and a half inch drives in the pedicases as I've been discussing in this video. So there we are. I've got an exciting new backup drive and I've told you more generally about my backup activities. Although I do want to stress, I am in no way suggesting that anybody else should do what I do. We all have very different backup requirements. And so if there is a message from the second part of this video, it's that I have thought about how I should back things up. I do have a strategy. And if your digital data matters to you, you should probably have a strategy too. Well, you really should have a backup strategy. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.